Nearly 150 years ago, the schooner Trinidad sank in Lake Michigan, roughly 10 miles off the coast of Algoma, Wisconsin. Built for cross-lake grain trade, Trinidad was part of the lucrative grain trade on the Great Lakes. The poorly maintained schooner met its watery end in 1881 in the icy waters of Lake Michigan. Welcome to Crunch. Today, we are looking at the fantastic discovery of a 142-year-old ship that archaeologists found as intact as a ship in a bottle. Hunting history. The discovery is the culmination of two years of searching. Archaeologists have been collecting dozens of historical news articles about the Trinidad and studying shipping lanes to locate a previously unseen image of the boat. The 140-foot Trinidad was described in a newspaper article of the time as one of the finest schooners ever seen. The crew had provided a good description of where the ship went down as well. As the Trinidad sank slowly, the archaeologists were sure that it likely remained intact. The archaeologists used sonar in July to see what they were looking for, and apparently they found it. The ship ticked all the boxes as the candidate for being Trinidad. With the help of Tamara Thompson, the Wisconsin Historical Society's underwater archaeologist, they measured the dimensions of the wreck they'd identified, which matched those of the Trinidad. With more precise measurements, the researchers found that the vessel's hull matched the dimensions of the Trinidad based on historical documents. Thompson and diver Zach Whiterock then went down to the lake floor to photograph the site and the artifacts aboard the schooner, where they found that the vessel's deckhouse was still intact, as were some of the crew's possessions and other items, including dishes, anchors, and bells. According to the duo of archaeologists, Brendan Bylod and Bob Jack, who found the ship. Trinidad was constructed in 1867 by shipbuilder William Keefe and was known as a canaller. Yet most schooners of her era lasted two to three times longer than she did. Despite that, Trinidad's wreckage is one of the top three intact ship remains found in Wisconsin waters. Mr. Baylord is the president of the Wisconsin Underwater Archaeology Association and wrote a book cataloging over 400 Wisconsin ships and shipwrecks. The archaeologists found the shipwreck by connecting the Trinidad's hull's bottom to a custom-built underwater tow. Hanging below the boat, the tow emitted a low-frequency sonar scan to produce a three-dimensional map of the lake floor. On their second day of surveying the terrain, they spotted a smudge, which was revealed to be the vessel resting beneath 270 feet of water upon additional scanning at a slower speed. The site of the schooner was almost exactly where Captain Higgins had first reported the vessel's water demise. The tragedy of Trinidad archaeologists were stunned to see that not only was the deck house still on her, but it still had all the cabinets with all the dishes stacked in them and all the crew's effects. Like a time capsule, Trinidad has a story to tell of its time. Lying underneath roughly 300 feet of water, about 10 miles off the shoreline of Algoma, Wisconsin, the impressively intact wreckage of Trinidad was in fact little more than a floating coffin at the time of its final voyage. Captain John Higgins and his eight-man crew were trying to escape the ship on a lifeboat on the early morning of May 11, 1881, when they caught a final glimpse of their schooner. Trinidad was then last seen disappearing into the icy waters of Lake Michigan. The ship was built at Grand Island, New York in 1867 and was used as a cargo ship in the lucrative grain trade between Milwaukee, Chicago and Oswego, New York. Trinidad would carry coal or iron from Oswego, New York to Chicago and Milwaukee, then return with Wisconsin wheat, which would eventually be shipped to large East Coast cities. It was an extremely lucrative trade, and the Trinidad's hundreds of trips made the ship's owners a fortune. These schooners were turning many upcoming businessmen into millionaires back then. 
If one lived in Philadelphia, Boston, or New York in the 1860s and 70s, then the sandwich they were eating had the bread in that sandwich almost certainly grown in Wisconsin and brought on a schooner. Yet, despite being a golden egg-laying goose, Trinidad hardly received any care in return. The insurance records suggest that Trinidad received little of the normal maintenance and was essentially sailed into the bottom of the lake. While the boat was afloat, it was already ridden with leaks and was kept in use despite its deteriorating situation. In late 1880, Captain Higgins docked the boat at Port Huron, Michigan in the middle of a voyage because he did not trust it to withstand the November gales on the Great Lakes. But on May 11, 1881, the schooner filled with water and began to sink, making the crew run for their lives. Captain Higgins waited until spring to resume the ill-fated voyage. Trinidad began to take on water the morning it sank. The ship's water pumps were overmatched, and Captain Higgins and the crew decided to abandon it. Trinidad eventually landed in its final resting place, nearly 300 feet below the surface. After rowing for nearly eight hours in chilly weather, the captain and the crew came ashore in Anape, which is now known as Algama. While all the humans on the ship survived the ship's Newfoundland dog, wasn't so lucky. He was asleep by the cabin stove when the vessel began to go under, and unfortunately, nobody paid the poor pup any attention. The ship had been there at the bottom of the lake ever since. The Treasury Trove of Shipwrecks In recent decades, the area off of Wisconsin's shoreline in Lake Michigan has become a destination for underwater archaeological discoveries. The Great Lakes' cold, fresh waters are an ideal environment for preservation. In 2021, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration designated 962 square miles from Port Washington and two rivers as the Wisconsin Shipwreck Coast National Marine Sanctuary, about an hour south of Algoma, where the Trinidad was found. 36 known wreckages of exceptional historic archaeological and recreational value, according to the NOAA, especially since the passing of the National Shipwreck Act of 1987 gave state governments the authority to manage abandoned wrecks on state submerged lands. Wisconsin has emerged as a leader in shipwreck preservation. Archaeologists say that he expects the Trinidad to be listed in the National Register of Historic Places before the end of the year. Afterwards, the Trinidad's precise coordinates will be released to the public, so the wreckage can be explored by other divers as a public resource. Thanks for watching Crunch, and if you enjoyed this video, please comment, like, share, and subscribe to watch more videos like this.